Good day folks, Sean here from Air Photography. So this is my one year long term review of the DJI Air 3. It's been out for about a year now and this has actually been a pretty incredible drone. It is nestled nicely in between the Mini 4 Pro and the Mavic 3 series. So for those of you who are looking for a little bit more power than the Mini series offers, but you don't want the bulk and the expense of a Mavic 3 series, this is actually a really good choice. The Air 3 got some brand new styling and I would have to say that of all the drones that DJI has released, this has probably been my favorite design. It's an extremely quiet drone. It's rated for 81 decibels and that can be very important. Not everybody's a fan of drones. So sometimes when you're out flying, you want to be a little bit more discreet. With the Air 3, DJI introduced a dual camera system. It comes with a standard wide angle, which is good for everyday filming, but it also comes with a 3X telecamera, similar to that that was introduced on the Mavic 3 Pro. That can help you get a little bit creative if you're trying to get some video compression, bring you in closer to the action without putting the drone too close to a subject. And the nice thing is, is that both cameras are capable of D-Log and all the intelligent flight features. Having both cameras capable of D-Log is important, especially when it comes to grading, if you're trying to match your content. And when it comes to the intelligent flight features, you can use all the things like master shots, all the focus track features, such as point of interest or tracking, no matter which camera you decide to use. And again, that can help you get really creative and can make for some really interesting content. Now like a lot of people when the Air 3 was introduced I was a little disappointed to find out that we were losing our one inch sensor but all that kind of melted away pretty quick once I examined the footage. This thing can capture some pretty incredible content even though it does have a slightly smaller image sensor. The DJI Air 3 also introduced USB-C charging. Now although that's a small little feature it can be very important especially if you take your drones traveling. In the past we had specific chargers for every drone so you know you had a lot of extra bulk you had to take with you. If you're traveling with a couple different drones, that could take up a lot of space in your camera bag. But as we've seen with the Mini series, the Mavic 3 series, the Avada series, everything is now charged with USB-C, including the Air 3. The charging hub got an update as well. We now have an enclosed unit similar to that that we've seen introduced with the Mini series. It's really convenient. It can act as a power bank if you need to charge up something like a smartphone in a pinch, you're able to do so. And on top of that, they introduced a feature, a consolidation feature, which you can take the power from three empty batteries, put them all into one, and that could perhaps get you an extra flight. I've actually used that a few times and it's worked quite well. Now when it comes to intelligent flight modes, the Air 3 is a full featured drone. It has all the intelligent flight features, similar to that of the Mavic 3. We have night mode, waypoint missions, it's capable of master shots, and of course focus track. That allows you to set a point of interest. It has my favorite feature, which is spotlight. That allows you to get really creative, you can lock on to a subject and then fly the drone around to any position and it will stay locked on that subject. And of course it has active track and with that we got that new 360 tracking which really expands the capability when it comes to tracking. Now I'm not going to get too much into tracking in this video. I've made several videos about that in the past. So if tracking is something you're interested in, which a lot of people are, definitely go back and check out those videos. On top of that, we got all the new AR features that DJI has introduced, such as visual return to home, which will show you the path the drone is going to take back to the home location. We got the AR drone shadow, which can help you land the drone, which can be really important if you're trying to land it in a very specific spot. Perhaps you've got some rocks around you and you just want to land in a very specific spot. And we got that feature that allows us to use the cameras to take a look around. That can be useful in some scenarios as well. The DJI Air 3 is equipped with the O4 transmission system, so that means you're going to have a good connection, even in complex environments, if you've got a lot of Wi-Fi interference. It's rated for 20 kilometers of range. Now, you're never really going to fly out that far. In most countries, you can't fly that far legally, but that's just going to ensure you always have a nice, solid, reliable connection back to the controller. The Air 3 is compatible with all the DJI goggles, including the Goggles 2, the Goggles Integra, and even the new Goggles 3. And of course, you can also fly it with the motion controller. But what is really nice with the Air 3 and the new Goggles 3 is that you can now actually fly it with the controller while using the goggles. That was something we weren't able to do before, before we had to use the motion controller, but a lot of people wanted to use a standard controller. So with the Air 3 and the Goggles 3, you can fly it while using the goggles using your DJI RC2 or the DJI RCN2. DJI introduced a new style of bag for the Air 3 and it's probably one of my favorite. I actually like it so much that I quite often use it when out hiking, whether I'm taking the drone or just some other camera equipment. 
It's just a nice comfortable bag to wear. It's not overly big, not overly small, it just holds a nice amount of gear. The Air 3 can easily capture vertical video. Now they've done it a little bit different than the mini series where the camera turns vertically. With it, when you're filming in vertical mode, you set that in the camera settings and it will kind of put some grayed out areas along the side of the video. It shows you what you're going to be capturing in vertical. The video that is saved to the memory card is in vertical, but it's almost a little bit safer because you can still see what's around the drone. You're not quite so tunnel visioned. Now it only records at a maximum resolution of 2.7K, but for the most part for social media, that's more than adequate. Now I don't want this video to go on too long. This is more just an updated user experience video. If you want my full review that I made when the drone came out, going over all the specs and features, you can definitely go and watch that. Now I would probably have to say one of my most favorite and most used features of the Air 3 is the cruise control feature. Now this is available on other DJI drones as well, but it really is a useful tool. It can be useful in many different scenarios, including scenarios like this where you're going to be using your drone kind of like a dolly camera. You can get some really interesting effects that way. I'm right now recording audio with the DJI Mic 2 and with its automatic noise reduction it can make for a very useful combination. Now, of course, you could always use Active Track to achieve a similar result, but I find with Active Track in situations like this where there's a lot of trees and branches and foliage, the Active Track can be a little bit unpredictable because it's going to be using the obstacle avoidance to avoid obstacles, and the footage can get a little bit uh, not as smooth, whereas with cruise control, you can set the direction and it will just fly. Of course, it's still going to make use of its obstacle avoidance, but it's going to do it in a smoother manner. And you can always take control on the sticks if you have to change the direction or stop it in an emergency. Now the obstacle avoidance on the Air 3 is actually quite good. That was one of the upgraded features we got on the Air 3 over the Air 2S and that is omnidirectional obstacle avoidance. So it can see all the way around now, whereas with the Air 2S it didn't have any kind of side vision. And that could pose problems in some scenarios, especially if you're going to be flying sideways or using some of the intelligent flight features. So the Air 3 with all of its intelligent flight features is really a great tool for creators in many different types of situations, including situations like this. If you're going to be using it for vlogging, you just perhaps want to capture some B-roll, do some commentary. Maybe you're doing some hiking and you just want to get some interesting B-roll footage. But I would have to say when it comes to GPS drones, this has probably been my favorite. It's just a really nice sized drone. It's super convenient to bring along with you. It's not overly big. Now I tend to fly my Mini 4 Pro a little bit more than my Air 3, but that's just because of the regulations here in Canada. I can fly the Mini series in more locations than I can fly this. This is over 250 grams, so that is something to keep in mind if you are a Canadian pilot. Now there's lots of places to fly in Canada, but they are a little bit more regulated. You do have to have a license and you do have to register it with Transport Canada. Whereas the mini series, you don't have to do any of that. So that is something to keep in mind if you are in the market for a new drone. But all in all, this has been an incredible drone. I highly recommend it if you are in the market for a drone and you want something a little bit more powerful than the mini series. The Air series has come a long way since the original and I'm really excited to see what DJI is going to do next. Well folks, that is my long term user experience review of the DJI Air 3. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. It's always greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in the next one.